So today we're going to talk about Melodyne. And Melodyne is, if you haven't heard of it, it's a pitch tuning and timing and basically does, you know, basically fixes everything <laughs> that's bad about your vocals. Now, just like Autotune, Melodyne does work best if you do know how to sing a bit. It's not going to fix the worst singers in the world. And it's definitely not going to sync fix my voice <laughs> but uh, um, I do work with a lot of great singers and sometimes you just need a little tweak and I'm going to show you the power of Melodyne right now so this is how it looks basically when you open the Melodyne assistant up and there's different versions of Melodyne you can get pretty cheap versions of Melodyne but I've got uh, this editor version which I think is just enough for what I want to do so the way to basically do stuff in Melodyne is you need to transfer your audio into Melodyne. So I've got a track here called Love You Too, and I'm going to now press the transfer button and press play. And as you play it, it'll just record it. So let's do that now. Finally, I found what I've been searching for. I left no stone uncovered when I took you on. I felt so cold, you were alone It makes sense to get together So that's the first bit and as you can see if you've got monophonic detection on it will basically it knows it's a voice and it will split it up and treat it automatically like it's a voice but if you want to change it if you want to say um use Melodyne for something that's not a voice. Maybe you want to use it for percussive or maybe for a piano or something like polyphonic or something like that. I just use it for vocal and I just use the melodic standard. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you don't really need to change these sort of things too much. Now, anyway, so once you've got all of this down, the other thing you want to do, if you're changing the timing of the vocal, is you want to go on the right-hand side here and just really get it down to, um, I think these are cr crotchets. <laughs> you want to get it down to the lowest level crotchet. And I don't use the thirds, but you could if you want to. Depends on the basically the timing of the song. Uh, so let's just bring it down to here. What that does is it gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of fixing the timing. Now, um, what you see here is a combination of, you see that size there, that sort of width you've got there, that's the loudness of the vocal and then you've got the fluctuating I guess the tonal quality of the vocal and you can see it's fluctuating quite a bit and here on the left hand side you can see the notes okay um, so it's pretty much it and you can you can do all sorts of stuff like if you click at the top here with the right click button you can make it smaller or larger or just fit the screen and you can on the bottom here you can sort of navigate around as well if it's a longer song and the way it works is just like any sort of mouse clicking sort of program you just click on the note that you want to hear so if you just click on this note Final. so it just plays that note back so if i want to hear what this one sounds like so Okay, so it has all those functions. Now, basically, the toolkit is right here at the top, and you've got uh, a couple of helpful things here, which we're going to go through now. So what I do sometimes, just to hear how it sort of could sound, is, and actually to get alignment. So the other thing is, let's, let's take a step back here. Um, you can see here, this is the note A. But you can see that within note A, there's kind of fluctuations. It's, it's kind of, yeah, it's hitting A, but... This note here straddling A and B flat, and this one straddling A and B A flat. So you can see here where the notes are actually hitting. And, and a lot of times that's a, a good thing, but you don't want it to, um, you know, you can see this note here. You don't want to overlap too much because then you don't really, you're not on a note in the song. So what I tend to do, and by the way, there are no hard and fast rules here, but what I tend to do is I will click on this. Um, actually, what's this button called here? I mean, I'm not even sure. It's called, yeah, correct pitch macro. So you cl click on the macro, and if you click on pitch center, automatically pitch center everything. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to put the notes in the right place. You can see here it's not putting it in the right place. It puts it into the place where it thinks it should be, um, but this one, I think, is not in the right place. 
And then you've got pitch drift, which is like, just gives you a bit of drift in the uh, pitch. And then, so I never really put this to 100% because you don't want it to sound too mechanical. I mean, in some songs you might want to, but not in this one. And then it detects the uh, chord of the song, it thinks it's in G minor. So we just do the snap to chord. And as you can see here, if you do that, it'll snap it to G minor in certain places, but you've selected everything. And I'm not gonna use that for now. So let's just click on that. And then you've got this other macro, which is quantized time macro, which I very rarely use, but you may want to use as a quick fix. And you don't really wanna use one quarter because I'll just show you what happens there. If you use one quarter, it will just really put everything out. So if we just listen to this now, by the way, we can undo this, I think. <laughs> Double click. Finally, I found what I've been searching for. I left no stone. So you can see there, for starters, that's oh. that's in the wrong place. Okay. And in fact, this case I hasn't left no stone done too much. When I took you on. I felt so cold. You see here, and this note here doesn't sound right. So what I mean is, let's just go back a couple of steps. The timing macro. The best thing for me, for, for anyone to do really, I think, is maybe to avoid it a little bit or to use 16th notes because it's a bit more, it's going to snap it a little bit more to um, a smaller range. So let's just bring that one up. 100% just to hear the effect. So we'll just bring it here, and start here. You won. I felt so cold, you were alone. It makes sense to get together. So as you can see there, that actually isn't too bad. So we're just gonna leave that on and it's just a fast way to get the timing and the pitch right without having to do too much. But say for example, uh, because we've got this um, cr uh, quaver crotchet thing, time grid settings set to the lowest level, we just expand this one. You can, you can just click on any of the notes and just move them as you need, but as you can see, you're only moving the starting position. You, you want to move the end position, you can do that too. But if you start doing stuff like that, you could really, you know, mess with a song. And obviously you can press Control Z for undoing. There's another undo function here. If you uh, right click and you can restore original timings as well. Let's just do that. And sometimes you might want to use the macro tool for the whole vocal, uh, but maybe there's a specific part of the vocal which was fine the first time. So you can just select that specific part and then original time. You can maybe select the original uh, tuning as well if you thought that was just fine. So you only, so you've got complete control over which sections need to be changed. As you can see here, I found what I've been searching for. You can see there that the, um, let me just move this back, that that note was automatically put oh. to the wrong place, but it's very easy just to sort of drag it down into the right place. Now, the other thing that you'll see here is kind of the wobbly formant thing that's going on here. So if we want to, I guess the, the word is more of an auto-tune sort of bass. If you want to make it sound a bit more auto tune you can um, select, let's just do this for the first section of the song. You can now select the uh, pitch tool and the pitch modulation tool. What it does is it removes kind of that um, LFO type modulation from the vocal, that uh, vibrator from the module, uh, vocal and it flattens it out. So let's just Finally. Let's do that. So if you have like basically a straight line going through, it'll sound like auto-tune. There'll be just basically no vibrato and, modu and modulation. So let's take a listen. Finally, I found what I've been searching for. Sometimes that works, you know. Um, let's once again restore original. In fact, you need to actually go to the area to do that. Restore original pitch modulation. Sometimes what happens is it's worth just doing a Finally. Whoops. <laughs> Sometimes it's worth just Finally. doing a little bit. Finally. And then it sounds kind of okay. It's like a sweet spot. Finally I found what I've been searching for. And now I find that sometimes the 
the change in so if there's a big change in note so this note and this note there's quite a big change but the modulation's flattened it out sometimes that doesn't sound very natural so you might want to just select the two select the two right click on them so select this again right click on this apologies sometimes it's a bit fiddly you want to right click on this and just restore the pitch modulation so it sounds so the transition between a higher and lower note sounds like the original but the actual note itself let's just go back here is it doesn't have that sort of big modulation so let's just take a listen finally i found what i've been so you can see that transition is more natural but you've got you know you have the ability to flatten out that modulation now the other thing it has is um, a couple of really useful things for example you can hear you can see kind of this smaller thing with lots of little <laughs> with lots of little uh, dots in it that's sibilance okay so if you for example now go into the amplitude tool you can select the sibilant balance tool and remove some of the sibilance there. there. It's almost gotten rid of it completely. So let's take a listen. So that sibilance is gone. Let's just take another listen. So that's also a breath, but here there's a bit of sibilance right at the beginning. So we just select that again and remove that sibilance. And if you really want to just delete the breaths it's really easy and they're just easier to see like I'm just clicking on what look like breaths and yeah you just get rid of them <laughs> so uh, pretty simple stuff the other thing that's really useful is on in certain parts of the vocal and this is where it really it's really different from other audio editing tools you can really be precise um, you can for example go to the you can actually Finally. reduce reduce the volume of selected areas if, they, if you think they're too loud. And this really helps take a bit of the uh, edge of the compression. So you've got sort of less compression needed. Finally, I found what I've been searching for. So a lot of this is not going to sound natural because you do have to work at separate sections. Here, the there is basically no pitch modulation at all. So we want to... Put a little bit on there so what you're looking for is and as i say this is different for every song you're looking for those kind of big uh mountain tops there if you see really big big mountain tops there there's it's a bit wobbly you may want to just kind of rein them in Go. but not too much because if you have the flat line it becomes auto tunish mm. which once again um, it might be exactly what you're after i left no stone uncovered when i took Okay, so it doesn't always work, and you just need to kind of practice and mess around a bit uh, with what you're doing. But um, let's just listen to now the what we've done so far uh, in the context of the song itself. Finally, I found what I've been searching for. I left no stone uncovered when I took you on. Um, so just one thing I've noticed is the... Um, this note here. You see that? See, I could hear that note was a little bit out. So let's listen to it again. Covered when I took you on. So that's a little bit better, and I've just got rid of a little bit of breath there. So that's it, really, for Melodyne. I think um, if you like this video and you want to see more of Melodyne, I can definitely. Um, do that and there are, as I say there are other use cases like guitar and piano and other types of melody you can do some pretty amazing stuff with Melodyne but really it's the goat for vocals I think it's better than auto-tune for vocals and it's a lot lot cheaper <laughs> it's a hell of a lot cheaper because uh, auto-tune you really need to you have to buy that sort of yearly subscription so you're always paying for it whereas Melodyne you could pretty much own it outright um, the the full module of it, Melodyne, is very expensive. I can't remember exactly the price, but um, you just don't need that. You just need one called the editor uh, version. And I've uh, upgraded. So what I would recommend is you start with pretty cheap, like the Assistant um, 
version and then you then upgrade uh, as you go as you get more experienced with it and each time you upgrade sometimes at black friday you get you see some deals and that's how i got mine i think i think all up i would have paid 150 dollars for it for this version which is the complete version for me it does everything i need it to do so yeah definitely um have a look at this if you haven't tried it already if you're a producer and you get lots of different types of vocals in this is uh, definitely the lifesaver, the thing that you're looking for, and it'll definitely help you. See you later.